Hey everyone, my name is Alex Haney and welcome to my channel, the place for outdoorsy queers to connect and share. This week I'm going to show you how I make my very own custom printed maps for navigating pretty much anywhere in the backcountry I could ever want to go and the best thing is that it's completely free with this online program called CalTopo, so stick around for that. Okay, so I'm super, super excited to share this program with you guys. I learned about it last year from one of my favorite guys, Andrew Skirka. It completely revolutionized the way that I travel in the backcountry, the way I plan my trips, the way I'm able to navigate and the places I'm able to go out there. Basically, what CalTopo is, is just an, an online website that stores a lot of different topographic data from, I believe, mostly the US and Canada. And it also has some other stuff like satellite imagery that you can incorporate in with it. You can add all sorts of fancy stuff to your map, make it look exactly how you like it and how you want it. Things like trails and portages aren't always marked depending on what topographic map set you're using on the program and where you're going to go. And usually what I'll do is I'll have one set of maps that is the more detailed set that is more zoomed in, so it's between 50,000 and 25,000 usually. And then I'll have, I'll bring some sort of overview map. So I'm actually just about to make a bunch of custom maps for a trip coming up. I'm doing 100 kilometers through Algonquin Provincial Park. Okay, so by no means am I an expert on this program, but I'm just gonna show you guys what I do, what works for me using this, so. Okay, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to caltopo.com, and that's gonna take you to a page that looks something like this. This is just showing me the north arm of Opiango Lake in Algonquin Provincial Park and it's set to the USGS 7.5 minute maps and there's a bunch of different options you can pick. Just play around with it. I'm not going to go through too many of the options with you guys because that's. I'm just going to quickly show you what I do and uh, but there's so much you can play around with here. You can stack new layers on to kind of customize how it looks. You can add contours and all this different stuff, new objects and not everything works for every single location, but uh, let me just show you some things that I sometimes use, like sometimes I put this to satellite, and I stack a new layer, I put the USGS 7.5 minute maps, and you can change the opacity, and I just like it because you can quickly zoom between the satellite image and you know the topographic maps. So the, you also have the, the contours and stuff, which don't actually work for this this location in Canada. So let me quick uh, go down to the Wind River Range in the U.S. and you can see it looks really different. Same maps, but uh, yeah, totally different here. And um, here you can add the contours here and the thick slope shading. You can add the normal relief, which is cool to see, and then it kind of gives you a better visualization of the landscape. And uh, this is not really the best to print out on your map, but when you're print planning your route, it's really cool to use. Let's just go back to Obiongo Lake in Algonquin, and I'm just going to guide you guys through my whole process of making a map for my next trip. The first thing I'd want to be making is just an overview map. So you're going to go up to print, and go to print in PDF or JPEG. That's going to load up the same sort of page with this type of thing. This is going to be your print area, the red. So for my overview map, I like to do custom 11, 11 by 14. For scale, I do usually for this type of map somewhere between 85,000 and 100. So I'm just going to reposition this over the area I want it. And then I'm just going to zoom in and see how far over it goes. So my route is starting at Canoe Lake, so that's going to be this corner. I try to do it in this. The least number of uh, maps that I can get away with. So on this end, the farthest I'm going is over here to the Petawawa. So it's nice to have a little bit extra on the side in case you do something happens and you have to change up your route or there's an emergency or whatever. Okay, so for for the grid lines, for the overview map, I'm going to use UTM. I'm using UTM as I said and I'm just going to leave it on auto. And so now what you're ready to do is generate the PDF and here's what it looks like. It gives you the UTM coordinates and the UTM zone down here. 
as well as your bearings and, and scale and all that stuff. Okay, now that our overview map is done, we're going to move into making the more detailed map. So you're going to go back to the main first page that you were at, center yourself back on the beginning of your route, and get everything how you like it looking again, and go to print to PDF or JPEG. Okay, so for my detailed maps, I like to keep it on my default here, 8.5 by 11. Scale, I've been liking 50,000. I've done 25,000 in the past, which is more detailed, but I find it a bit overkill for most of my needs and I'm switching maps way too often. I'm going to center this map how I want it, so the start of our route is right here and we're going to the northwest up here, so that's how I like it. For my grid lines, I'm going to go UTM again and I'm going to change this to one kilometer. That's just what I like. You can also do latitude longitude if you like, so let's go to generate PDF. So here's what it looks like. Now, I, I know some people find these lines distracting. Uh, if you do, then you can totally not select that and then it will just be blank like this. Let me quick show you that. And it is a lot cleaner looking. It's definitely nice. I don't find it that distracting and I kind of like at night going through and figuring out how many kilometers we covered that day. And uh, yeah, also in case of an emergency, I do have a satellite communicator, so for if for whatever reason I had to communicate with them about where I am, then I can tell them my UTM zone and my exact, pretty much exact coordinates, and they'd be able to find me. Okay, so now I would just go and save that page. Detail map one, save. Or you can just go ahead and print straight from there. And get rid of that, and then it'll just go take you back to PDF page and basically what you're going to do is just keep going and making maps for your route. So we covered this up until the corner of Potter Creek here. So I'm just going to move my map and make sure that it just covers a bit of Potter Creek too so that I can easily connect the maps. And there it is. I'll show you one more because I'm actually going to change this to landscape now because we're starting to go, let me just check where this went over to, so that covered about to the middle of Misty Lake, so then I would go here and overlap it a bit with the section that was covered here, just so I could find where I was at again. So I'm actually going to move it up though, because after we head east, we're going north a bit, so you just want to fiddle with it a little bit. So we're going here through the Petawawa River here, down into Grassy Bay, and then we're going to start going north from there again. But we don't really need much of this information down here, so... Okay, so this map is done. I'm just going to go whip up a couple of more maps just to cover the rest of our route and then I'll show you guys the printed result and um, add in some of my, my notes and additions to the map that I like to do with marker or pen or something like that as opposed to doing it in this program. Which you can also do, but I'm just not gonna cover that too much because I'm just showing you the way I do it. So let me just show you my system here. I carry my maps in one of these kinds of cases with my compass in it and um, I always print it out at a scale that is compatible with my compass so this does the 25,000 and the 50,000. Here this will just give you an idea of the difference between the 25,000 scale which is right here you can see Canoe Lake at 25,000 and this is at 50,000 so that's what Canoe Lake looks like there. Okay, so basically what I did was I saved them as a PDF and then sent them out to get printed because I don't have a color printer or any printer. So, you know, if you don't have your own printer, then don't let that stop you. I just send mine to Staples, but use whatever is convenient for you. So now that these are printed out, what I'm going to do is go and um, label the maps in order. So I'm going to put, you know, numbers on each of them. So this is map number one. We're starting right here and uh, down at the corner of Canoe Lake. And, you know, you can draw lines that will show you your route, but, you know, I have the route pretty much completely memorized, so I don't feel like I need to do that. 
And you can see on this map here that um, the portages are marked. There's lines through here. So I'm not going to go through and mark the portages, but you know, if they're too faint for you or um, they're not there even, then you're going to have to go look at um, your guidebook or uh, more detailed maps like this, this Jeff's map where all the uh, portages are marked or wherever you get your information for your route and um, go ahead and mark those in yourself. Something that's not marked on these maps though for this section is are the campsites and I'm not too worried about it because they're really well marked in Algonquin but I am just going to go through and mark down a couple on the lakes that we're going to be camping at just so you know when it's it's going to be late in the day when we get to our campsites and uh, I want to be able to know where to look so um, this one here this is the first night we're staying on Craneville Lake right there and uh, so what I'm going to do is go to this map and find Craneville, which is right up here in the corner. And uh, see the little black triangle there is where the campsite is. So it's um, on the north shoreline and I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to go back and mark that on this map with a triangle. Okay, so here's what the map looks like now with all of the little triangles added for the campsites. And there, that's basically all I do. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial and I hope this gives you a lot more freedom and your route planning and your trips and saves you some weight and money as well. If you guys do use this program and you have any other tips to give, that would be awesome. Leave them in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I make these videos every Tuesday and also on select Thursdays I do backcountry trip videos and there's actually one coming up this Thursday so be sure to check that out this week. And I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.